Luber Loney, Christian Fourier, and yours truly, Glenn Ordway. We're here on OMF, and today is something uh, we're doing very special. It's Giving Tuesday on WEEI, all to benefit the Jimmy Fund, and it's presented by Arbella Insurance. Uh, throughout the day, we're going to be raising awareness and supporting the inspiring and courageous patients over at Dana-Farber and the Jimmy Fund, and I want you to meet Vanessa Sebastian from Ledyard, Connecticut. Hello, Vanessa. Hello. It's nice to meet you. Nice um, to meet you too. Thank you for having me. So you were a breast cancer survivor from 10 years ago. And then this year you got hit again. Tell us what happened. So, yes. So this year I actually, um, I had actually no symptoms and I went into the emergency department with excruciating pain on July 26th. And um, I just had centralized abdominal pain. It was really, it actually felt like, like I had gas and I kind of resisted going into the emergency department because I didn't want to be like the, you know, the CRNA who went into the ER with flatulence. So I kind of resisted for about five or six hours. I'd be there all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I really thought it was just gas. I thought it was honestly gas. And um, I ended up going in and they ended up doing an abdominal CAT scan Um I ended up staying in the hospital. They found that my blood counts were really low. So I ended up having a transfusion. I had a colonoscopy and then ended up staying there for over 10 days. Um, had a um, had colon surgery. They found a, hum a huge tumor in my transverse colon. So you, you've already had one bout of cancer and you survived that. Just kind of take me through the emotional, I guess, gymnastics that you were going through realizing that you had to kind of go through this all over again because I can't imagine it being an easy diagnosis hearing that 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 cancer word again 100 percent, especially knowing that they were two primary cancers that were unrelated and I'm under 50 um, I never ever suspected that I was when I went into the emergency room that day that I was going to be leaving 10 days later with a um, with a diagnosis of colorectal cancer never ever was that on my radar um so it's it's devastating it's absolutely devastating um and it just it rocks your world but i also knew that i would get through it like whatever the treatment plan was going to be i was going to do it i had already done it once so i was going to do it again so a couple things for me vanessa um colon cancer that is really young right did the doctors tell you that that's sort of rare for somebody yeah. your age 100%, 100%. And um, I just, because, you know, at the time that I got diagnosed, it has since changed the United States Preventative Service Task Force just changed the recommended guidelines for colonoscopies to 45. But that was just done at the end of October. Mm -hmm. When I was diagnosed in July, it was still 50. So I theoretically wouldn't have had a colonoscopy um, until I was 50. And I really had no symptoms. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a difficult diagnosis to take. And I think that had I got diagnosed earlier, I think that I would not be going through chemotherapy. We wouldn't be having this conversation right now. So you get diagnosed with the colon cancer and you know right away, Dana-Farber is the place for you, correct? 100%, there was no question in my mind. Yeah. Um, I had been previously treated for breast cancer um, at Dana Farber, and I had all the faith in the world. Um, I remember walking into Dana Farber um, back in 2011, and if there's such a thing, I always say this, but if there's such a thing as Disneyland for cancer patients, Dana Farber is where it's at. That's in my opinion. It's just there were so many services, and there were, I mean, and honestly, no one wants to be at Disneyland for cancer patients, right? right. But if there's such a thing, that's where it's at. There were so many services, and my oncologist, you know, was not just my oncologist, but she was my friend. And and it's like, I felt like I was family there. You know, this is my oncologist is someone that we email and, you know, we wish each other, you know, Merry Christmas. And if I ever have a question, she's always, she always answers me so promptly, like within a matter of minutes. Mm. So I knew immediately that I was going to Dana-Farber. So as soon as I had my diagnosis, I know that I emailed my oncologist, but I don't remember because I was probably still a little drugged up from surgery. Um, so I was in the hospital when I had emailed my oncologist and said, 
I was just diagnosed with a tumor in my colon. Who do you recommend that I see? And that's when Rachel Friedman actually had recommended me to Kimmy Ng. So how does this all work for you? You're working full time. You run a business. You're also going in for treatment. How do you balance all of this and keep your spirits up? It's really hard. I pray a lot. I'm very spiritual and very religious. So that to me is really, it's an important part of my life. Um, and that really keeps me grounded. Um, but it really is just taken one day at a time. And I can't, I can't look too ahead of myself. I have to just take every day it comes. I take every treatment as it comes. You know, when I thought about six months of chemotherapy, that's a long time. So for me, I couldn't say it's six months of chemotherapy. I had to say, you know what, it's 12 treatments. So, and now I have six treatments left. So I kind of, for me, it was easier to, instead of six months, 12 treatments was a little better. So I just kind of take it one day at a time, one week at a time, one treatment at a time. So also, you know what, you're burying the lead here, Vanessa, like you're burying it. Like the, the, the real important part is Vanessa is a grandmother, guys. You wouldn't, uh -oh. you wouldn't know it by looking at her, but she's a grandmother. So I want you guys to guess what her, her, what her, her grandmother name is. It's not grandma, but what is Vanessa's uh, nickname for, from, from her granddaughter? Nana. Nana, what do you got, Lou? Nana. Uh, <laughs> Gigi. Gigi, oh, she probably, it was close. That's close, it's close. What do you got? Give it to him, Vanessa. It's Vivi. Oh, Lou See? gets the prize. Lou gets the prize. GG, VV, same thing. It's same yeah, thing. It's great. Yeah. Missed the, the V on the name. But I how's mean, that? She's not going to be able to say it until she's like four, yeah. but it's VV. We'll just yeah. continue to correct her until she says it correctly. It'll be VV. I'm sure I'll be BB. I'll be me, me, but I will ultimately <laughs> be me. <laughs> so, how, and so you have six sessions left. Is that what you said? So, um, yeah. so you're at the halfway point. I'm at the, I'm, yeah, I'm at the halfway point. Wow. Which, so you, you were talking about how, you know, hearing the cancer diagnosis again, right. After being a survivor already, but hearing it again, because you were a survivor, did it help you sort of mentally prepare differently than maybe hearing it for the first time? kind of like what you're about to go through were you more prepared I don't know did it so the... I wish that I could tell you that yes it was easier um but honestly it's not easier because mm. it's another cancer it's another primary cancer diagnosis and you know initially you kind of circle like the dark hole and your mind takes you to re like really dark places you know so it's you I just had to kind of like regroup and get myself together and just remember like a big thing for me is that my mind is connected to my body. And so, and your thoughts become things. And so I had to just continue. I did a lot of meditation. I did a lot of like positive self-talk. And so was it easier? It was definitely not easier. I knew that I would, I always, I always knew I would get through it because I know that I'm strong and I can handle anything. Um, but it's still, your mind takes you to a really dark place, regardless okay. of whether you've gone, you know, you've, you've done it before. Yeah. Vanessa is a former Mrs. Connecticut, a top 10 Mrs. American semifinalist. She also starred on the Bravo TV reality show, Game of Crowns, which for research for this project, I actually Googled it and saw some of the video. What was that? <laughs> What was that experience like? Oh, it was amazing. You know what? So, you know, being on reality TV. So for me, I had a career and I already had, um, you know, I had this great solid background. I have an amazing family. I have this wonderful career. So it wasn't the end all be all for me, but for some people it is the end all be all. So it kind of, it changes the dynamic of friendships and it changes the dynamic of um, opportunities. And it was from that standpoint, it was amazing opportunity and it gave me um, a platform to talk about my breast cancer, which was really important to me. Um, and it, it gave me, it gave me opportunities that I otherwise wouldn't have been able to have. You know, I was on the Andy Cohen show, watch what happens live with Andy Cohen. One of my favorite so shows. I was, yeah, he's great. And I was the only one from my cast on that show. Um, so that kind of puts a different spin on the dynamic of friendships and 
um, and relationships among the cast members, but it was a really other, it was a great opportunity. It really was. So but no, yeah. nobody was flipping over tables or anything like that? That's crazy. <laughs> no, they were trying, they were trying, you know, I, just, I, just, I had to keep remember that I had to keep, you know, reminding myself that it's like real, it's reality TV. It's real. It's our real lives. And it was a phenomenal, phenomenal experience, but it wasn't like, it wasn't going to make or break me. Do you know what I mean? I didn't need it. Does that make sense? Like I didn't need it. So it's, um, but it was, you know, listen, fame is the one thing that money can't buy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they say. So, and you do kind of get, you get spoiled and they, they, treat you differently and people treat you differently and you have access to things that you normally wouldn't have. So from that standpoint, I was very fortunate and blessed because of it, but it's, you know, it's over now. It was like my Christian, Christian you should Google it because you would like the show. Oh, I already did. Oh, come on. Well, listen, and I'm, listen, a- I'm a lot nicer. I'm a lot nicer. You know, I'm a lot nicer in person. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I have to say, you know, it was real. It was real. There was, nothing scripted people asked me they were like is was it scripted and i'm like it's not it's not scripted. so it was nobody was like leading you down a certain path like hey listen you should i, I heard samantha say this about you you, should, you i wouldn't take that we need you, you. Yes, we, yes, we need you to be a little crazy yes. <laughs> you know no one would say that but they definitely egg you on like yeah in a, you know, in a way, but they don't ever tell you what to say. Like ultimately you're responsible for your own actions. So if you do it, say it, they can use it because they reserve the right to cut, edit, dub, delete, and fictionalize and misrepresent you. Oh, <laughs> it's like radio. <laughs> I know yeah. it's like radio. We know that so, very well. <laughs> so, so the whole thing is when I started it, I was like, okay, if I don't say it and I don't do it, they can't use it. Right. Yeah. So, there you go. I had to kind of, and during the entire filming process, I had to kind of reel it in a little bit. Cause I was like, you know what? I am a CRNA. I'm an advanced practice nurse. At that time I didn't own my own business, but I was giving anesthesia in the operating room and I still needed, it was a really popular show and a lot of people were watching it. And so when I was giving anesthesia, my concern was I didn't want my patients to be like, Oh, there's that crazy one from reality TV. You know, they <laughs> still had to trust me with their lives. So I had to kind of just temper yeah. I'm about to put you to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I couldn't flip tables and then uh, to sleep. Yeah. Uh, so where are right. you today? Where are you today? What's your, your uh, situation? And uh, uh, what are the doctors telling you right now? So I was diagnosed with stage three colorectal cancer. I have to, I'm doing chemotherapy preventative wise. Um, the, when I had surgery, the tumor was completely taken out. My margins were clear. So I'm doing the chemotherapy, um, as preventative and, um, you know, my prognosis is really good. My prognosis is good. Awesome. That is awesome. That's great. That is awesome. Good to hear. Great. Listen, you know, it, was, you know, it was great meeting you and, uh, yeah. great continued, meeting you continued great success. And I know you're going to beat this thing and you've got a great attitude and that's part of the battle, as you know. And I do like that line. The uh, Dana Farber is the Disneyland. Is that what you called it? The, the Disneyland for cancer patients. I like that. That's a good line. We'll remember that one. Yeah. Thank you very much, Vanessa. Uh, this is WEEI Giving Tuesday to benefit the Jimmy Fund presented by Arbella Insurance. You can donate. All you have to do is visit jimmyfund.org slash Tuesday. Or you can text K-Cancer to 20222. And you can make a $25 gift. <laughs> 